today's lecture is on the diseases of the temporomandibular joint. Temporomandibular joint is a synovial joint which is mainly formed by the junction of the mandible and the temporal bone. So the mandibular condyle articulates with the articular surface of the temporal bone and it forms the temporomandibular joint which allows the opening closing movements of the jaw along with the protrusive retrusive as well as translatory movements that are required so this is an example of a normal temporomandibular joint here what you see below is the condyle and this thin soft tissue that is in between is the articular disc so the posterior part is joined by two portions here one going upward towards the temporal bone and another going down to form the capsule of the temporomandibular joint and when this articular disc is separating the two bones you have an upper compartment and a lower compartment the upper compartment predominantly allows translatory movement whereas the lower compartment allows the rotation as well as the translatory movements now the posterior part of the articular disc is very very flexible it is it has elastic fibers because of which the anterior movement of the condyle the disc automatically follows the condyle as and when it moves when the condyle moves back the disc is actually pulled backward so this is how the normal temporomandibular joint functions now this temporomandibular joint consists of not only the articular disc and the bone but is also involved by muscles the lateral pterygoid incorporates itself along with the disc apart from these you will have the temporalis the masseter and the medial pterygoid which regulate the movement of this particular joint the temporomandibular joint disorders is similar to any other joint disorder they can be broadly categorized as developmental traumatic inflammatory neoplastic extra articular disturbances and myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome among the developmental disorders you can broadly think of a disorder in which the condyle is completely disappeared it's called as the aplasia of the condyle it can also be smaller size condyle may be unilateral or bilateral called the hypoplasia of the condyle excessive growth of the condyle can relate, result in hyperplasia of the condyle both hypoplasia and hyperplasia gives asymmetry to the face traumatic disturbances include disorders of the disc called luxation and subluxation fusion of the two parts of the temporomandibular joint the condyle and the temporal bone called ankylosis you can have multiple injuries of the articular disc or traumatic fracture of the condyle the inflammatory disturbances as the name suggests arthritis itis means inflammation arthro means joint inflammation of the joint is called arthritis it can be due to specific infection like a gonococcal infection or a streptococcal infection or it could be a rheumatoid arthritis osteoarthritis or a traumatic arthritis like any other bone any bone neoplasia can affect the condyle although rare extra articular disturbances of the surrounding tissue can impinge on the temporomandibular joint resulting in problems a special syndrome called the myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome and closely associated temporomandibular joint syndrome we will discuss about that in the end of the lecture the very first component is aplasia of the condyle the condyle which is placed anterior to the ear lobe may be not formed during the development this can be associated with the defects of the external ear also along with underdeveloped mandibular ramus the chin will be very receding and small there is no specific treatment for this however an osteoplasty can be performed 
for the normal functioning of the joint. Hypoplasia is nothing but small sized mandibular condyle. It can be a congenital defect where we do not know the cause, hence it's idiopathic. But in earlier times, when forcep deliveries were used, they used to use a forcep to hold the child's head at the level of the mandibular condyle. This led to trauma and hypoplasia of the mandibular condyle. Apart from these, infections and radiation injury can also give rise to hypoplasia of the mandibular condyle. Clinically, there may be asymmetry if the hypoplasia exists on one side. As you can see in this photograph, the plane of occlusion is slanted towards one side. It is higher placed at the side of hypoplasia and there may be a midline shift and limited movement of the joint. The treatment would not be feasible because there is inherent growth defect. Maybe cartilage and bone grafts have been tried out in severe cases where movement of joint is impeded. Similar to hypoplasia, there may be an unilateral enlargement leading to hyperplasia of the mandibular condyle. This also leads to asymmetry, but the slant will be opposite to the affected side. The etiology is generally thought to be a mild chronic inflammation of the joint space, which leads to progressive growth of the cartilage and the bone. The treatment would be mainly resection of the joint so that there may be symmetry and proper movement of the joint that can be hazard. Because of the lack of the articular disc that separates the lower and the upper compartment, the mandibular condyle may fuse with the temporal bone, leading to hypomobility. This is called ankylosis. It may be due to a trauma like in forcep delivery or a fall leading to the injury to the chin which gets translated through the ramus to the condyle region. Infection of the middle ear, septicemia may damage the articular disc leading to ankylosis. Abnormal intrauterine development is also a cause. Usually this is seen less than 10 years of age where you will see facial deformity with a very receding chin as you see in this picture. Based on the side of involvement, it may be unilateral or bilateral. To compensate for the opening, there will be a prominent antigonial notch. Based on the site of ankylosis, it could be an intra-articular ankylosis or an extra-articular ankylosis. Intraarticular ankylosis may be associated with the flattening of the meniscus leading to a fibrous ankylosis where the articular disc itself fuses the maxillary and the mandibular. Sorry, the articular disc itself fuses the upper and the lower compartments. The extraarticular ankylosis, there may be slight movement present wherein there will be splinting of the upper and the lower compartments, the temporal bone and the condyle, because of a fibrous growth occurring to the side of the articular disc. Traumatic disturbances of the temporomandibular joint include some disc problems. In this picture, you can see there is a disc which moves along with the condyle. The purple color here represents the articular disc. Normally, the lateral pterygoids, as it pulls the joint, it also takes along the tissue. The retrodiscal tissue is very elastic. So when the condyle moves forward along with the disc, it allows the disc to come back to its position with time. The initial movement is rotatory movement followed by a translational movement. The rotatory movement usually occurs in the lower compartment. Whereas the translatory movement occurs both in the lower as well as the upper compartment. So as you can see the 
articular eminence, which is a part of the temporal bone, the condyle moves along the slope of the articular eminence. It goes up to the tip of the eminence and then it comes back because of the elasticity. Now, in case of an error in this positioning of the articular disc, the articular disc may be positioned anteriorly, like in this case, and the condyle will contact with the posterior aspect of the articular disc, which may lead to pain and improper movement. This is called as disc displacement. The hypermobility state of the joint can be a luxation or a subluxation. Luxation is a concept in which there is complete dislocation of the articular disc. A partial or incomplete dislocation which allows repositioning of the joint by the patient himself is called as subluxation. It could be resultant of a sudden trauma, stretching of the capsule, excessive yawning and the jaw will suddenly get locked because the condyle moves anterior to that of the articular eminence and is not able to come back to its normal position. Now in this case you can make out the joint moves anterior to the articular eminence and gets locked in that position. The muscles do not have the capability to go downward and backward around the articular eminence. So the patient will come with an open jaw and there will be prolonged spasmodic contraction of the temporalis leading to pain in the temporal region the, around the lamus. The best possible treatment, the best possible treatment would be massaging the area of pain and then holding the molar region, the mandibular molar region, places your thumb on the mandibular molar region, pull the mandible downward and rotate it backward. So basically you use your four fingers on the chin region, the molars in the molars are pressed downward by the thumb and the rotatory movement of the mandible brings the condyle below the articular eminence backward into the condylar space. The mandible usually rotates and moves forward and backward. While chewing it moves left and right. There is a translatory movement. But because of the articular disc being deranged or in an abnormal location, there will be abnormal movement seen in the mandible. So let's have a quick look at a few videos here. So here is a mandibular condyle which moves anteriorly and posteriorly and observe the disc that is on top of it. The disc, the posterior portion moves forward and then when the mandible moves back, the condyle moves backward, the disc also comes backward. So you can see a bulk of tissue in this particular region here. Now this bulk is the posterior part of the disc and this is the disc here and this is bulk is the anterior part of the disc. Now let's have a look at this particular uh, location here. So here there seems to be some abnormality in the disc. The posterior bulk is here, anterior bulk is here but the middle portion there seems to be a loss of tissue. Now what happens then? You do not have enough lubrication, you do not have enough tissue and the condyle rubs against the bone of the temporal joint and when it rubs you hear that crepitus which the patients may usually feel. This crepitus continuously leads to erosion of the condylar head as well as the articular eminence of the temporal bone. And this will lead to pain and ref mostly usually uh, leads to a referred type of pain which manifests as a headache or a joint pain or a tooth pain. So this is a serious issue because once the condyle is directly in contact, it leads to arthritis and it could be a traumatic arthritis that may manifest. So let us, let us fast forward the video and have a look at the end of the, yeah, here you can make out the perforation is very clear. Okay, see here, you can see the 
whole articular disc is deranged and disappeared. Now let's see what happens with this. You can make out that the bulk which is there in the back of the condyle and the bulk in the front of the condyle doesn't get into position properly. When the condyle moves forward, the posterior bulk moves ahead giving a clicking sound and when the condyle moves forward again, the bulk shifts and moves backward. So the articular disc keeps popping in front of the condyle and behind the condyle, leading to a clicking sound while opening as well as clicking sound while closing. Now this is with reduction. That means the articular disc comes back to position every time the patient opens and closes the joint. But can it happen that it never comes back to position? Yes, it does happen. That is called as the anterior disc displacement without reduction. Now here you can see that the bulk of the tissue is in the anterior portion and when the condyle moves forward, the anterior portion never pops back to normal position. Now this will have some restricted movement because the posterior portion of the articular disc is not so flexible to move forward as it used to before the articular disc was in correct position. So there will be restriction of movement and constant pain during uh, opening of the joint and there will not be any clicking sound or popping sound. Now let's have a look at a degenerative joint disease because of a perforation which I had explained in the previous video. Here you can see that the condylar head has lost its shape. It is no longer uh, convex and it's becoming flattened and it gives rise to a constant crepitus and degeneration of the condylar head. So this will lead to a constant pain, crepitus and inability to open the mouth and speak to a certain extent. So usually these changes are more likely to be seen in females than in males for unknown reasons and the most common area where the pain is sensed is the periauricular region. There may be snapping or clicking of the joint based upon the disc movement happening with reduction or without reduction and the patient will not be able to open the mouth widely. In case of severe pain, you may have to position back the articular disc into normal location and immobilize the jaw for a certain time so that the tissue can regenerate and become normal. Condylar fractures are a serious trouble. The condylar fractures may be primarily due to trauma or secondarily because of infection or an odontogenic cyst or tumor or anything that weakens the bone in that particular region leading to a pathological fracture. Usually when the condyle fractures, there will be locked jaw. The condyle is usually displaced anteromedially. Rarely it is laterally or posteriorly. There will be pain, swelling, hematoma in that particular region leading to inability to open the jaw called as locked jaw. Inflammatory disturbances include inflammation of the joints which is very rare in the temporomandibular joint. It can be due to specific infections or rheumatoid arthritis or a degenerative joint disease also called as osteoarthritis. Of special mention is the gonococcal infection. Gonorrhea is notorious to show TMJ disorders and it causes TMJ arthritis. The other infections that can cause arthritis of the temporomandibular joint include streptococci, pneumococci and staphylococci. It can be due to a direct infection of that particular site or a spread of infection from cellulitis or osteomyelitis from the jaw infections. Clinically, there will be limited mobility with pain, tenderness on palpation and whenever it heals, it may lead to fusion of the joint leading to ankylosis. There will be complete destruction of the articular cartilage scar formation or so called as cicatrix. Rheumatoid arthritis similar to rheumatoid fever will have fever, weight loss, pain, stiffness of the joint like any other joint. Multiple joints may be involved. Movement of the joint causes pain and clicking and stiffness is more experienced in the morning time. Later on with movement it becomes a little more easier. Rheumatoid arthritis of the children is also called as the stills disease. 
in this histological picture you can see that the synovial membrane is proliferating with dense chronic inflammatory cell infiltrate osteoarthritis demands special mention this leads to hypertrophy of the joint it has milder symptoms so the patient generally ignores it and there will be constant clicking and pain is rarely experienced hence the patient may not come to you with symptoms histopathologically you will see a perforation destruction of the disc and there is loss of elasticity of the disc and the disc shows horizontal fissures here is an example of subarticular erosion see these round erosions of the bone are noted along with this there will be proliferation of the bone leading to osteophytic lipping there is no specific treatment for rheumatoid arthritis however corticosteroids have been tried out osteoarthritis is progressively destructive and condyle condylectomy can be tried out like any other bone or cartilage diseases TMJ can also show tumor formation like osteosarcoma, osteoma, chondroma, chondrosarcoma. However, it is extremely rare. Of special mention is the temporomandibular joint syndrome. Earlier thought to be synonymous with myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome. But now we know that there are two different entities. The temporomandibular joint syndrome can occur following the myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome or it can be secondary to a true articular disease like any of the arthritis previously mentioned. Most of the TMJ problems is because of malocclusion and bruxism. Although psychological effects with stress and anxiety and any temporomandibular joint disease is also mentioned in the etiology and you may encounter them commonly in your dental practice. Malocclusion may be iatrogenic wherein because of an abnormal filling there may be an excessive high point leading to improper occlusion leading to TMJ problems. So let's have a look at this video. Now here you can see that the articular disc may be moved anteriorly leading to pain in that particular region. Now there are multiple muscles that are involved here. So you can see the lateral pterygoid. You may also have the medial pterygoid which is the masseter, the temporalis. All these have specific trigger points. So if you look at the temporalis muscle, it covers the temporal region and there may be a trigger point which when palpated may lead to pain and the pain is not usually in that particular region but may be referred to different parts of the face, the forehead, the head etc. It may also manifest as tooth pain in certain cases. Temporomandibular joint dysfunction syndrome usually is seen in females of 20 to 30 years of age. They have four cardinal signs. It is peri or intraauricular pain. You may use your little finger within the joint cavity which in the external auditory meatus and when you ask the patient to open and close the mouth he will experience pain. When you palpate the muscles of the mastication the muscle will be tender. There will be clicking and popping sound of the temporomandibular joint and there will be limitation of joint movement. Myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome is usually bilateral, associated with nighttime bruxism, jaw clenching, stress and anxiety. Temporomandibular disorder can be unilateral and usually manifest as referred pain. Radiographically, the picture is similar to rheumatoid arthritis with multiple erosions and osteophytic lipin, which is usually seen as small cysts in the radiograph called as the LE cyst. Usually a self-limiting disease, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can be used. In case a psychological phenomenon is experienced, a counseling session would be helpful. 
many medications like muscle relaxant, physiotherapy, transepidermal nerve stimulation have been found to be useful in limiting temporomandibular dysfunction syndrome. Thank you.